The Prime Minister's announcement for a November 1st reopening has sparked mixed reactions from different sectors. Meanwhile, Phuket and Koh Samui said they're easing entry restrictions for domestic arrivals, and authorities are warning of, yet again, another tropical storm. Details on these stories and many more coming right up. Welcome to the Tiger Channel, and you're watching Thailand News Today with me, Jet Gunther. We give you updates on the latest headlines in Thailand, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Following the Prime Minister's announcement that Thailand will reopen quarantine-free for select vaccinated tourists from November, some prominent medics are worried that reopening without a quarantine will provoke a surge in COVID infections. Tira Wara Tanarat from the Faculty of Medicine at Jualongkorn University has warned that daily case numbers could end up doubling and even continue doubling every three weeks as a result of the move. Meanwhile, Tirawat Hemajutha from the Thai Red Cross says he supports the reopening but does have concerns about it triggering another wave of infections. Meanwhile, virologist Anand Dongkawatana asks how the country can realistically perform PCR tests if up to 100,000 tourists visit. The tourism minister, however, was not deterred. Pipat Rashakit Prakan says the Tourism Authority of Thailand has been preparing for this for a long time, starting with the sandbox models in prominent tourism destinations with plans to expand it further in November. He says the reopening plans of other countries, including Singapore, have prompted the Prime Minister's new policy, given that several other countries have already opened without quarantine. He said that if Thailand continued with a quarantine policy, it will not be able to compete well with other countries. Pipat says the public health ministry is making arrangements to accelerate the COVID-19 testing process at airports, adding that more details of the reopening plan and which countries it will apply to will be confirmed shortly. So far, the UK, US, Germany, and China are reported to be on the list, despite the fact that China citizens are currently barred from overseas travel. And Pipat says more Asian nations, including Singapore, could be added. The chairman of the Federation of Thai Industries has welcomed the plan to reopen Thailand to vaccinated tourists from low-risk countries. Supan Mongkhon Suti says the plan November 1st reopening will accelerate economic growth and increase business confidence. He predicts the return of foreign tourism could see GDP growth achieve its target of 0 to 1 percent this year. While a number of health experts have voiced concern about the plan reopening and the impact on infection rates, Supan argues that the pandemic may never end, adding that the country should shift the focus from daily new cases to looking at the declining fatalities and improving vaccination rates. Meanwhile, Sanan Ang Ubon Kun from the Thai Chamber of Commerce has also welcomed the reopening plan, but says the government must be able to provide more vaccines. He said it is important to build confidence by communicating to various countries about the process of entering Thailand using international standards. Meanwhile, Dilip Rajakarier from Minor International Hospitality Group has described the November reopening as a step in the right direction. However, he suggests that the government should communicate with and encourage international communities to set up exemption protocols for travelers returning from Thailand, as those vaccinated travelers have undergone numerous safety protocols and should be able to return home with a minimum of inconvenience. And amidst all this excitement over the November reopening, Public Health Minister Anutin Shangirakun thought he'd chime in on the matter as well, revealing that it is possible to shut down the country again should a serious COVID outbreak occur. That's it. That's the story. I'm just going to let that sit and stink up the whole room. Another beautiful day off the coast of Phuket. Back to more of Thailand news today in just a moment. Sean Stenning from Five Star Marine. 
uh, across the other side, we've got Krabi and the Hong Krabi. Yes. They've been doing quite a lot of work during the uh, the downtime. Yeah, National Park's been amazing out there. They've built probably the best viewpoint that I've ever seen. Uh, you're going to go up and then right at the top, you're going to see every island in this area. You're going to go look around over Pang Na Bay, Hong Krabi, Pee Pee, Yo Ya Yo Noi, and it's stunning and it looks right over a lagoon. Just the most stunning thing. So Hong Krabi is about, uh, what, 45 minutes from Phuket? Yeah, 45 minutes out there, uh, 16 islands in the Hong Krabi area. Oh. Yeah, and a beautiful viewpoint, nice mix of snorkeling and sightseeing. Um, and one of my favorite beaches out there, a little paradise beach. Okay, that was the one in the mechanic? Uh, well, that's one of the ones out there. And yes, uh, you know, I still hope to see Jessica Elba out there one day. Okay, and on your way back from Krabi, you visit this little spot. Yeah, this is Koh Rung Ye, just a little private island. Nice little spot to come relax and uh, maybe watch the sunset before heading back in. This looks like the perfect little tropical island with the palm trees. I think this is what you see in the postcards, right? This is where they're going to do the remake of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> okay, Sean, thank you very much. Back to you, Jet. From this weekend, entry restrictions for the islands of Phuket and Samui are being eased for fully vaccinated domestic tourists. Local travelers who can show proof of being fully vaccinated will no longer need to submit to COVID testing to enter Phuket and will no longer have to quarantine after arriving on Samui. The move comes as the government launches phase three of the We Travel Together subsidy scheme aimed at boosting domestic tourism. The change comes into effect on Friday for Gosamui and on Saturday for Phuket. Meanwhile, the governor of Phuket says officials are working on simplifying entry procedures for domestic visitors while also boosting the island's testing and tracing capabilities. Meanwhile, the governor of Suratani province, where Gosamui is located, says domestic tourists and returning residents must be able to show proof of being vaccinated in addition to a negative result from an antigen test taken no less than seven days before arrival. Travelers must also install and register their profile in the Samui Health Pass mobile app and present their Mochanak QR code before entering and using any services or establishments in the area. Following the World Anti-Doping Agency's decision of ruling Thailand as non-compliant with the agency's requirements, the Thai government says it wants to put more focus on regulating banned substances at international sports competitions. Thailand, Indonesia and North Korea were ruled non-compliant with the agency's requirements. The agency declared that Thailand failed to fully implement the 2021 anti-doping code, while Indonesia and North Korea did not implement effective testing programs. The ruling means Thailand will not be given the right to host regional, continental or world championships. In reaction to the ruling, Thailand's Office of the Council of State released a statement saying government officials are looking into drafting amendments to the 2012 anti-doping law. Meanwhile, the Sports Authority of Thailand also announced the Thai government is working on how to comply with the requirements. Lots of rhetoric. Let's see how things actually pan out. On November 4th, prosecutors will decide whether or not to indict Tanaton Dungrungrungkit over his comments on Thailand's AstraZeneca technology transfer deal. At the start of the year, the founder of the progressive movement criticized the government for being overly reliant on Siam Bioscience for COVID vaccines. Tanaton faces charges of violating Thailand's defamation law and the Computer Crime Act, but the most serious charge is that of less majesty. The law, or Section 112 of the Criminal Code, prohibits criticizing, defaming, or otherwise disrespecting the monarchy and carries some harsh punishments. On January 18th, Tanaton used a Facebook Live broadcast to question the awarding of the AstraZeneca contract to Seyam Bioscience by way of a technology transfer deal with the manufacturer. Seyam Bioscience is wholly owned by a subsidiary of the Crown Property Bureau. In the Facebook video, Tanaton called on the firm and the government to share details of the technology transfer agreement to prove it had been handled transparently. The three charges were subsequently filed by Apiwat Kantong from a government committee charged with investigating the spread of disinformation in relation to the Prime Minister and his administration. Tanaton's lawyer says prosecutors are being asked to confirm if Apiwat has the authority to bring such charges. 
The lawyer pointed out the similarity with an earlier case against Anaton, in which the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society had petitioned the criminal court to order the removal of the aforementioned Facebook video. Now, in that case, the court rejected the request, ruling that the content of the video did not violate Thailand's less majesty law. Parts of Thailand are braced for more wet weather as tropical storm Kompasu makes landfall in Upper Vietnam. The Thai Meteorological Department has warned of heavy rain for the northeast of the country, while several other regions will be affected by the seasonal monsoon conditions. Kompatsu's wind speed has recorded a high of 100 kilometers an hour at its center. Yesterday, it was moving in a westerly direction from the upper South China Sea, expected to pass China's Hainan Island and hit Upper Vietnam before weakening. Heavy rainfall is also forecast in other parts of the country as a result of the southwestern monsoon over the Andaman Sea, the south and the Gulf of Thailand. Provinces in the lower north and northeast, central Thailand, the east and the south are all likely to be affected. All right, it's been a while since we reported on a classic gold heist. A suspect in Chonburi allegedly stole nearly 200,000 baht worth of gold from a shop in the Don Hua Law District. But police say he dropped something when he ran out, his phone. An employee at the gold shop told police that a man went into the store on Sunday and asked to see gold items because he was looking for a gift for his girlfriend. Surveillance camera footage shows the employee taking necklaces and bracelets out of the display case. The man then grabbed a few gold items on the counter and ran off. The employee says the items were valued at 196,000 baht. However, in his rush to escape the mall, he dropped his mobile phone by accident. Police were therefore able to track down the suspect, but did not release the name because the investigation is ongoing and they were preparing to make an arrest. And that's all for the report, but check out the video that just popped up to continue watching shows on the Tiger Channel. Thailand News Today will be back tomorrow. Meanwhile, you're now up to date on the Tiger.